And now, technology for independent living in Futurus. Stefan Sundin suffers from the incurable and debilitating disease called multiple sclerosis. Since 2003, the former truck driver has been confined to his home in Hudingswald, 300 kilometers north of Stockholm. He relies on his wife for virtually everything, or he did, until technology took over many of her jobs just a few weeks ago. Now, thanks to his speaking diary, Stefan knows when to take his medication, when to phone his doctors, and went to eat. I would say that my wife doesn't have to do so much anymore. I can manage more things on my own, I would say. The assistants are helping me to adjust to the new technology and now I can do lots of things on my own. Today a medical worker is coming to see Stefan. When she rings the doorbell, a camera linked to Stefan's television lets him know who's calling. He opens the door from his wheelchair. Stefan's house is equipped with a network of CCTV cameras and sensors, helping him to be more independent. It is here in the Swedish Handicap Institute that many of these devices are being developed. The Mon Ami project, as it's called, is one of several European research projects. This apartment is the Institute's laboratory. Called Smart Lab, the apartment bristles with cameras, sensors and other technological devices. This is where they test the prototypes that could someday help to set the handicapped and elderly free from total dependence on others. Gunnar Folgerberg is the project manager. I'd like to prefer the term autonomy because uh, we, that gives the individual uh, more control of his or her own life. And then you can choose how much dependent you want to be. Some people want to be very independent and, 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 and take complete care of themselves. Others would like some more contact and, and more, more uh, social interaction with other people. But uh, we want to provide the possibility to have both. The aim of Smart Lab is to help a person who has some kind of disability to be able to stay and live more secure at home. From this armchair you are able to control the whole apartment. For instance, you are able to control the blinds, the curtains, uh, the lights, outlets, the entrance door, for instance. And another thing <coughs> is your uh, this, uh, automatic vacuum cleaner that we have, which helps the person to uh, keep the home clean easily without doing yourself. Here is one device that could help the person to find the keys, for instance, or the wallet or the glasses. Calendars are very important to help the person to structure the day. It starts beeping when the activity is about to happen. Another thing is uh, this easy use is uh, dictaphone. Uh, remember to buy uh, pictures, flowers and some butter today. Remember to buy uh, pictures, flowers and some butter today. 83-year-old Anna-Lisa Jokobsen, a former accountant who underwent heart bypass surgery last summer, demonstrates some of the devices. A voice tells her the day and the hour when she wakes up. A magnifying computer mouse helps her read. Tiny cameras assist her to recognize visitors. Interactive recipe books show her what and how to cook. Open and close curtains and blinds, and control the main entrance door. This helps the person to know that, okay, when she or he is leaving the house, see the water is fluid, and the oven is on, and she, she goes back and switches off. But let's say the per person forgets this, goes out and closes the door, you hear a voice. That explains that the water is running. You're able to go back inside again. Otherwise, if you don't do this, the technology takes over. 
Independent living technology has also proved very helpful to 65-year-old German Rainer Metzmacher. The lawyer and former civil servant was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease 15 years ago. But now, instead of making frequent hospital visits, Metzmacher has time to ride his bike around his hometown of Munster. Three times a day, he performs special exercises in front of a digital camera with the help of recorded instructions. The pictures are then sent via a modem to his doctor. The advantage of this therapy is that it allows me to have contact with my doctor without actually having to visit him. The doctor can observe me on video and see me in different situations. Using this technology, he is freed from having to rely on subjective estimates from patients about how they are progressing. He can watch their responses and form a much more accurate assessment. The result in my case was that the doctor has given me two new medications which have greatly improved my mobility. Eighteen kilometers away from Rainer Metzmarker's house, his personal neurologist watches his movements on a computer equipped with special software. The doctor assesses his state of health and prescribes the correct doses of drugs. For doctors, this treatment is extremely important because it allows us to see the mobility of the patient. There are times when he is less agile and times where he can move very well. This would be difficult to assess during occasional meetings at the hospital or in our consulting rooms. Prescriptions are sent via a special printer. Around 1,300 German Parkinson's patients have used the surface since 2005. Now, free from the necessity to continually visit his doctor, Rainer Metzmacher is able to spend more time indulging another of his passions, playing tennis, which he does on average four times a week.